you think any of these teams have found their franchise quarterback? You think that draft, quarterback draft class, was overrated? Um, right now, yes. Absolutely. If the best player, best quarterback in that draft is the fifth quarterback taken, then yes. Trey Lance, in his second year, not going to see him again to his third year. Uh, you know, Fields, I mean. Been a mess. Been a mess. You know, who knows if, uh, you know, the best re- receiver they have is Nikhil Harry. Trevor Lawrence, I think everybody was loving the fact that Doug Marone was a head coach and it felt like he was being, playing a lot better. But since, like, his last two games, it's been a disaster. Who am I missing? Oh, uh, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has won his last two games. La- won his last three games. Actually, the Jets have won their last three games. He seems the one that's like, huh, were we wrong about him? But so far. Well, they won the last two games with him not throwing. Well, my point is, but still, I mean, technically, he still gets credit for the win, or I guess more importantly, not losing the game, right? You at least say that. Got to give him credit for something. He's the only player. uh, The quarterback is is the only player in pro football reference that actually has a win-loss count next to their name. But Mac is still the best. That's that's the thing. Mac is still the best out of all the five. Top five, he's the best. I mean, you do you think differently? No, no, I think right now, as far as where they are right now in their careers, he's played the best at this point, I would say. Um, I just wonder if, like, it's a, you know, did, did any of these franchises all spent first-round picks? Five guys, 15 picks. Like, any of these guys turn into top top 10 quarterback in the league? Top five quarterback in the league? Any Definitely not top five. Looking down this list, it's so crazy to me because – I remember covering this draft and feeling like everybody's saying that this is the best quarterback class in like a decade. Oh, it's so amazing. Trevor Lawrence, he's the golden child. Like he's going to be the future of whatever franchise he goes to. And so many of these guys now that were, uh, you know, about a season and a third removed from that draft, they just have an asterisk next to their name. That's a really hard word to say. Uh, like Trevor Lawrence, you say, well, it's about Urban. Urban ruined him. You've got to take that first that first season away. He's mm-hmm. still trying to recover from that. Zach Wilson. Well, Zach Wilson was with the Jets, and, you know, he started off this season injured, and he's just trying to – they were just having him, like, you know, airmail it out there and everything. And then, go to Trey, well, Trey Lance is injured this year. Justin Fields is the one that feels like the obvious mess. Like, he yeah, doesn't even look like he's – he looks yeah. like he's not going to be a starter in three years. He's going to be a backup somewhere. If you remember, if you go back to say, like, after week three, Jacksonville Jaguars blew out the Chargers in, in L.A. And all week long it was like, Lawrence is the dude. Like, the, he is a dude. He is what we thought. Then they lost to the, the, uh, the Eagles. He threw an interception and fumbled four times. Four times in that game, which they lost by eight, and really kind of hasn't been the same the last couple of weeks. So I don't know if it's, you know, because he was trending after the first three weeks. Like, there it is. Like, there's the guy. that There's the dude in the draft. And last two or three weeks, it's been like, what the hell is going on here now? Did you say oh, any of these guys be a top five quarterback? Yeah. Okay. So, no. Absolutely not. Because let's just make sure we're, we're clear. Top five to me. I mean, that's that's the best of the best. That's Allen. That's Mahomes. That's Lamar Jackson. That's... And Rogers, those are, you know, those are MVP candidates that can win a game on their own, right? Those are those guys. Top ten, though, I think so. I think, I think, I think if if Mac Jones is in the, you know, becomes in, in the situation becomes a little bit better for him, can be a top ten quarterback. I think Trevor Lawrence, six six two twenty five, man. I mean, with with uh, with the right coaching, should could be able to be a top ten quarterback. Uh Top five? Nah, not a chance. Not a chance. I think you know right away. You asked me yesterday about uh, Lamar Jackson. As soon as you started, you're like, oh, okay, he, this guy's like this guy's different. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, after he started, uh, this guy's different, right? Uh, all, all those Josh Allen took him a little, a little bit longer, but then you're like, holy crap, this guy's different. Joe Burrow. And this guy's Joe Burrow. I mean, gets a knee injury, then you're Herbert. like, this guy's different. Herbert, I don't know. Uh, we'll see with Herbert. We'll see with Herbert. But I don't think he has as much – cachet as Burrow does. So you're Same na- draft class. You're naming those young quarterbacks. All We're talking you know. top five. Yeah, so so we're naming, obviously, like, we're not talking about Rodgers. We're not talking about Brady. We're not talking about guys who, in the next 10 years, are going to leave the league, if not next year. We're talking about Josh Allen, Mahomes, Lamar, Herbert, Burrow. Those guys are kind of penciled in as next 10 years, they're going to be in the top 10. So there's five already gone. You think any of these five are realistically going to be 
when we sit here Lawrence, six no, years think, from now, one of these guys is going to be in that list? Could they be? Yes, yes. Okay. Do you think Matt, Matt could? Yes. A top ten? Yes, Because you I keep do. saying Lawrence, Lawrence, oh, no, the no, size I say that because, he is. I, but, I, uh, but I started with Mac. The answer is yes with Mac for me. I think yes. He could be a top ten quarterback. That's more achievable than I think, which is the unicorns that are the other quarterbacks that I talk about. Franchise altering, you know, uh, quarterbacks where you just put a couple pieces around them, you're going to break records, you're going to be in the playoffs, you're going to be winning Super Bowls, he's going to be winning MVPs. Coordinators, offensive coordinators, are going to get head coaching jobs because of you. Two years straight, two years later now, right? None of these guys really lighten it up. You still think if you could choose all these guys, remember the whole redraft thing that you would go with Mac? Do you, would would you still would he be still be number one? Mac would be. I think I'm a little bit more personally intrigued by Lawrence um, because I'm curious if he has the intangibles that I think Mac has. But the draft class for me would be still be Lawrence one, Mac two. Well, see, wow. Yeah. Yeah, you easily. Mac, I understand absolutely. dropping fields, but you, you still don't know what you have in Trey Lance. I don't listen. It's two years, and I—I I, I mean, he's not playing. He's injured. I know, but last year he couldn't play. He's so raw. He's so raw. He's, he's like he just has a he had a long way to go, anyways. So him missing this year is a big problem for that team. See, to me, what's intriguing with this exercise, and we, we've done it before, but I would, since you're seeing Justin Fields, and I remember during the draft, people losing their minds because the Patriots didn't trade up to go get Justin Fields. Justin Fields is right there. You know, he's got the scramble to him. You never have that in New England. Go get Fields, and you just wait around, and you get Mac Jones. But Trevor Lawrence, Trey Lance, those are guys who – the upside, I feel like, is more unknown than the upside with Mac Jones. I feel much more like, and, and part of it is we've seen more Mac Jones, but just the raw athleticism that those guys have, the yeah. things that you can't teach, Christian, the size, yeah. the speed, the arm strength. Now you like, you're never going to be able to coach that stuff. So I think I put Mac Jones at three. I think if I read uh, draft putting this, ahead of him? Davis Mills. No, I got a better Davis, chance with Davis the Mills. The periscope. Why would you put anyone other than Trevor Lawrence above Mac Jones? Davis Mills would be what? exactly what Mac Jones is. If okay, he was but what? To okay, but just for Megos, yeah. for the sake of argument here, based on what? Because I'm still intrigued by Trey Lance. Just the athleticism. But he's what you the could last do with per- him. I know, but right now you're going to say he's still going to come out more inexperienced than Mac if you redid it again. Mm-hmm. You would still have to teach him. There was still it's be not this the right great position. unknown. Christian, it's not like the this. right position. Yeah, uh, I, for I'm the with, Patriots, he wasn't yeah. the right guy for the Patriots at, at that time. Absolutely. I'm just intrigued. When, when we're talking about an exercise where who's going to be in the top 10 in the next decade, like those are the names that I'm going, if it, I could see one of those two. Yeah, and, you know, to your point, we were talking about this the other day. How many times does it take like three years for a guy to pop? Usually you know right away, right? And a lot of the guys that we mentioned – Guys like Josh Allen, who is an athlete that can run, obviously. Jalen Hurts, an athlete that can run. Some of those types of guys, those guys do take a little longer. You know, the pocket pass, you probably should know right away. But those guys, that's what it relies to coaching, which is what sort of makes me feel like I've seen Justin Fields play a couple of games, and it's not pretty. It's not. It's He's inaccurate. It's like one look, tuck it, and run. I think that he would have a higher ceiling if he was in New England here with Bill Belichick than Mac does with Bill Belichick. I think Bill Belichick takes young quarterbacks, helps them understand the quarterback position, and actually turns this guy into possibly a passer, like they did in Buffalo. We talk about Steph Diggs. Steph Diggs helped him. There's no question about it. But if he was still throwing a ball at his ankle, Steph Diggs ain't catching it. If he was still throwing a ball over his head, Steph Diggs ain't catching it. Over his head. He got he's better. throwing it to the concession yeah, stand. He got better. You know, he, he could always run, but he was inaccurate. Why? Good coaching. McDermott, Brian Dayball, good coaching. And this is where you got to give Bill credit. Every young quarterback he has can play in this league. So if he took an athlete like that, a guy that can run and make a difference with his legs like Fields or Lance, I think he would coach him up and turn him into a better passer. I think the well, ceiling would be higher. The, see, I see. I don't know about the whole turn him into a better passer. Maybe. Jalen Hurts. How about turn him into Maybe. a quarterback who Lamar can make Jackson. better? Can you, teach, can you teach a quarterback to make better decisions? Because that's kind of what they did with Josh yeah, Allen. Yeah, I think you can. I think, I think there are some that are just – a little bit more disciplined and need just a better, you know, direction. I do. Yeah. yeah. Jalen Hurts is a good example. We'll see how that plays out. How about Lamar Jackson? Out. What about him? Better thrower now. It was Much two better. years I don't, ago. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, passer. I don't think he's like, when I look at him as a passer, he just flicks the ball. Uh, but he's, he hits his target. And a lot of times he throws it up for grabs and he, he's a nightmare. 
But he's to me, to me, he's I don't think you can compare anybody to him. He's special. You create an offense to him. You draft and 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 get free agents for him. Players that suit his style, linemen that suit his your offensive philosophy. He's separate than all of them to me. He's just different in in all categories known to man. And that offense, even when he was breaking records and he was the MVP, he led the league in touchdowns because they were in the red zone so many times and they were constantly play action passing people to death. So he had so many different options and he was great with it. Great tight end, good receivers. You know, at that point in time, good running back, and he was a good runner also. Lou, so, would you would you rather have Justin Field have them had taken Justin Fields and have Bill coach him up and yes. be in that position right now? Yes. Wow. Yes, I would. Wow. Trey Lance as well. I'm just saying, like that to me that that's when we talk about ceiling. And I was mentioning like I don't think it takes two, three years. Unless you come in the league and your greatest asset's your legs. And it's like, can I turn you into a passer? Can I turn you into a pocket passer? Reading defenses because you survived with your legs. Like these guys that we're talking about that take two or three years. Because I think Bill Belichick is fantastic with young quarterbacks. I don't know how much more you got to see. Whether it's Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones or Jacoby Brissett or Jimmy Garoppolo or Tom Brady as a young Matt Castle. All these guys play in the league. All of them. Forget about his coaching tree. Look at his quarterback tree. They all play. So... Could he take a guy like Justin Fields and turn him into a better pass than what we're seeing? We're going to see Monday night because I think it's atrocious. Absolutely. Was that I think all the ceiling Bill, would be through the roof. I mean, how much of that was McDaniels? All different coordinators. Yeah. All different guys. Who was the constant? Bill. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. See? People aren't used to me giving him credit, and I just did.